Hello and welcome. Uh, a little bit of a change of venue here. You'll notice an absence of swords behind me, but I've tried to nerd this area up as best I can for you. You'll notice a Cyberman over here, and there's a Luke up there, and a uh, Darth Maul up there. So that's, that's a token effort. Um, but uh, hopefully you'll forgive the uninterestingness of the, of the setting here. Uh, when it come, or when we, we start talking about the, what is truly interesting, which is the topic of the video, acrylic blades. Now let me go ahead and introduce you to this one, and then we'll start talking about what they are, where they come from, and what they're good for. Alright, so this specific blade is a uh, Spartan blade from Ripper Blades. Uh, I'll do a review specifically on this blade, but for this video, I just wanted to talk about the concept of acrylic blades uh, so that uh, you guys can know what's going on out there in the market right now. You see a lot of these things floating around and a lot of discussion and a lot of comments, so I wanted to get up close and personal with them. First off, I wanted to start with the history of the acrylic blade. Uh, a while back there was a craze for black blades. Now this was something that you saw in the video games, Knights of the Old Republic, Force Unleashed. Uh, you saw it in the, or you see it these days in the TV series with the black blade of Pre Vizsla. Um, the idea of a solid black core on a blade with a, uh, with a glow around it. And now, people were trying to approach this in different ways. Some of the pictures that I saw when this craze was at its height, people were putting, um, taking a regular lightsaber blade and putting wire tape down, two si or down one or two sides of it so that if held at the right angle, it looked like that black blade. Um, somebody at some point that I saw actually made one that had a motor inside that turned uh, turned an internal core that tried to block out the light in the middle where the, while the outside still glowed. Um, other people wrote it off as impossible. There was actually a video from uh, Genesis Custom Savers that I recall where he wanted to introduce you to their new black blade and so he took a lightsaber and then he turned the light off and he didn't turn the lightsaber on. Turned the light back on and said, yeah, that's because we can't actually make a black blade. There's no such thing as actual black light. Um, but uh, one of the other approaches that came out to this, and I believe that uh, Ripper Blades were some of the first ones to do this, was the idea of the acrylic blade. Now the acrylic blade is not, or is not technically a black blade. The idea behind the black blade was we wanted something that absorbed light in the middle and emitted light around the outside. Now since that's not technically possible or not really functionally possible unless you're going with that wire tape option, uh, the acrylic blade was designed to basically work on a compromise. If we can't absorb light, we can transmit light through the middle. It can just be see-through. And we can control where the light diffuses to make it glow where we want it to glow. So what they ended up doing was they ended up using a piece of acrylic or flat acrylic and tooling it. Uh, so what the end result is, is uh, let me go ahead and take this out and show it to you. We have a flat piece of acrylic attached to a one-inch circular plug so that it fits in most LED lightsabers. Uh, inside here, specifically on the rippers, it's sort of curved so that it picks up the light and tries not to lose very much of it out the side. There's some hot glue here for diffusion. Uh, but the light enters through here, travels up the blade in much the same way that uh, if you've ever seen those bistro boards with, with these special markers, it's a black board but it glows where the marker uh, hits. Uh, also some custom signage is done like this with flat acrylic. Basically anywhere that it's clear the light just keeps moving. Anywhere that it's not clear or tooled the light is going to glow right there. Okay, so this is basically the design of them. Um, and it works pretty well. It's not exact or it's not black. You can see through it. But relative to the light that's glowing from the outside unless you're dealing with a light source behind you Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything in there. It gives the illusion of a black blade. All right now, um, there are about a dozen people who make these from what I've been told. I've found three or four. Uh, most of them are people who have Etsy shops. The only people who I think have really taken this seriously and made a career specifically out of this are Ripper Blades, because this is what they do. Ripper does not do lightsabers. They just do blades. Uh, and this was sort of their flagship design, not the specific design, but the flat design. All right, so um, that's what they are, uh, that's, and what they do. Um, 
In terms of what they're good for, well, they are an awesome costume piece. I'm going to show you a little bit here with this, uh, this narrower ninja blade. So, if you're looking for something that's off-canon as a costume piece, an energy blade or something like that, then an acrylic is definitely the way to go. Let me just show you how this plays with different colors. So it plays really well with whatever color you put through it. Some acrylic blades actually use dye to control this color in much the same way that a day blade does. You could dye the lightning itself, or you could dye portions of the blade to control what color is going to come out through there. Some of the more expensive ripper blades actually use this. They've got the dye on them. Some of them I've seen have a specific pattern with dye at the base so that the base is a different color from the rest of the blade. Uh, you can just paint on it and control that effect. Um, they're really awesome for costume pieces, as I mentioned, for cosplay. These things also work for shelf queens. If you're going to have your saber sitting up on a shelf, turn it on every so often, or use it as a light source, this is a really interesting way to go. In terms of actual use, though, there's some limitations to this. Uh, you don't use these for full-on dueling. The reason is that they are brittle. They're also quite a bit heavier than a standard blade. Okay, now, in this uh, area in here where it's attached, uh, there's an acrylic weld in here attaching it to this tube. If you hit it on something, that weld can snap. Alternately, the blade itself is material that can snap, if, especially if I hit it with the, with the flat. It can snap just like any acrylic could. It doesn't have the durability of polycarbonate. Now, their uh, Saber Forge actually makes some axe blades that use this flat technology that are polycarbonate. They're still more fragile than the standard blades. They still weigh a lot more, which actually makes them, or is part of what makes them more fragile. The polycarbonate doesn't transmit the light as well as the acrylic does, so you end up with kind of a matte finish on those, and it doesn't reach the edges quite as well in terms of light. Works fine when you're dealing with something this size, but if you're dealing with something this size, not going to work out too well for you. So, um, they're fragile. In terms of uh, what use you can put them to, they do still work for spinning, provided that you're careful or for really careful choreography where you are in definite control of any hits that uh, are being able to pull any hits that you might actually land. Okay, in spinning, as long as you're careful, these work fine. There is one element to them though that you don't get with a uh, that you don't get with a circular with a uh, tube blade. These things are directional because they're flat. Okay, what that means is that as long as I'm swinging with the edge I don't have too much problem. I've actually got a little bit more control than I do with a tube blade that has a drag to it. However, if I start swinging with the flat, I lose control and I lose speed. Now you can actually hear it when I swing it. So I'm going to step back a little bit and I'm going to swing this one for you. Uh, you might have to turn your speakers up a little bit to catch this. Okay, here is with the edge. You can kind of hear that swoosh to it. Now watch what happens if I try to swing with the flat. Okay, It's a much more dull sound and it actually, uh, I lose control and I put a lot more stress right here on the joint. So you can use these provided that you're keeping, or keeping track of which direction the edge is going which actually, in a lot of ways, mimics an actual sword a lot more than the tubes of a standard lightsaber blade. That effect, however, is amplified in this uh, acrylic over what it would be in a sword, because metal is heavier than acrylic, so you're ending up with more wind resistance, less weight to account for that. So, just something to keep in mind with, you, or and keep in mind, rather. You can spin with them, you can technically do choreography with them, you can't duel with them. Uh, these things, though, they are pretty neat. Um, 
I would highly suggest that at some point, if you've got a lightsaber collection and you're really into this hobby, you might pick one up because otherwise you know you're just going to be curious about it until you do. Um, however, like I said, they're, they're more for the costume, photo, or performance uh, venue than they are for dueling. So if all you do with your saber is go out to Saber Legion and beat the hell out of people with it, this is not for you. Uh, so hopefully that has been of use to you. Um, brief introduction to acrylic blades and what they are. They're becoming an increasing force in the market. More people are making them. There are more of them around. So I thought it might be in your interest to, uh, to get a little bit up close and personal with them. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please come back for other reviews and subscribe.